For today's crazy calculation, we're going to learn about the law of sines. So, what is the law of sines? The law of sines can be used to find missing angles and side lengths in triangles, and not just right triangles, any type of triangle. You can use the law of sines when you know one side of the triangle and the measure of the angle opposite that side. So, if you take a look at this triangle right here, we know this angle, and we know the length of the side opposite of the angle, so we can use the law of sines. Same with this triangle, we know this angle, and the side opposite of it. And for this triangle, we know one of the side lengths, but we aren't exactly given the measure of this angle. However, we know that the angles of a triangle always add up to 180 degrees, and we know two of the angles, so if we just do 180 degrees minus 21 minus 49, we get this angle as 110 degrees. So we know an angle and the side opposite of it. And then you also need one more thing to use the law of sines. You just need to know one other part of the triangle. So that could be an angle, like this, you could know this 40 degree angle, or it could be a side length, like this. You know this side is 17. And for this triangle, you already know two other angles, so you're set to use the law of sines. So this is the law of sines, and you can use this law when you have a triangle that looks like this, where you have angle A opposite of side A, angle B opposite of side B, and angle C opposite of side C. So what this formula tells us is that the sine of one angle in a triangle divided by the side opposite of that angle is equal to the ratio of the sine of another angle in that triangle divided by its opposite side, which is also equal to the ratio of the sine of the last angle divided by the last side, which is opposite of this angle. And that's why in the beginning I said you can use it when you know one side of the triangle and the measure of the angle opposite the side, because you have to know what that ratio is to use the law of sines. So we can use the law of sines to solve for this triangle right here. As you can see, we have a side length right here and we know the opposite angle, so we're all set. Before we start solving, I'm going to label parts of this triangle. So I'm going to call this side right here side A, which means this is angle A right here. And I'm going to call this angle right here angle B, which means this side right here is side B. So now we have all the missing parts labeled. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up the ratio for this triangle. It's going to be sine of 46 over 8. And now what I'm going to do, since I know this 40 degree angle right here, is I'm going to use this to solve for A. So sine of 46 over 8 is equal to sine of 40 over A. And now I'm going to cross multiply and I'm just going to solve for A like normal algebra. So when I cross multiply, I get 8 times sine 40 is equal to A times sine 46. And now I'm going to divide both sides by sine 46 like this and I get A is approximately 7.15. So now I know side A, and now what I wanna do is I wanna find side B. But before that, I need to set up the ratio, so I have to know the angle opposite of side B if I wanna find side B. And that's pretty simple, because we know these two angles, and we know a triangle has to equal 180 degrees, so B is equal to 180 minus 40 minus 46, which is 94 degrees. So now we can set up our ratio, same as last time, sine of 46 over 8 is equal to, this time, sine of 94 over B, because this right here is 94 degrees. So now if we cross multiply and solve for B, we get 8 sine 94 equals B sine 46. And now we can divide both sides by sine of 46. And B is approximately 11.09. And one thing I forgot to mention is that this triangle is what we call a, A, S, because we know two angles that are next to each other and then a side that's not between them. The side is after the angle. We can also use law of sines in a situation we call ASA, where we have two angles and we know the side length between those two angles. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to label all the parts of this triangle we don't know yet. So I'm going to call this angle right here, angle A, and that means this side right here is side A, and I'll call this side here, side B, and this side right here I'll call side C. So the first step is just to find angle A, because we need an angle opposite this side right here. So like the beginning of the video, we're going to do A is equal to 180 minus 49 minus 21. So A is equal to 110 degrees. So I'm going to use this 110 degree angle right here and my side right here of 27 to solve for the other side lengths of this triangle. So I'm going to solve for B first. And I'm going to set up my ratio sine of 110 degrees over 27 is equal to 21 degrees over B, because 21 is opposite of side B. 
And now what I'm going to do, like last time, is I'm just going to cross multiply. So 27 sine 21 is equal to b times sine 110. Divide both sides by sine 110 like this. And I get b is approximately 10.30. So I know side b now, and now all I need to do is find side c. So I'll use the same method. First, I'll use the ratio that I know. Sine 110 over 27 is equal to sine of 49 degrees over c, because 49 is opposite of c. And now we'll cross multiply again, 27 sine 49 equals c sine 110, divide both sides by sine of 110, just like before, and I get c is approximately 21.68. So now we know all the missing parts of this triangle. We know angle a is 110 degrees, we know side b is 10.30, and we know side C is 21.68, and we finished this triangle. And if you have good memory, you might remember we saw this triangle in the beginning of the video. This is a situation we call SSA, because we have two sides and an angle that's not in between the two sides. And since we have an angle and the side opposite that angle, we can also use law of sides to solve for this triangle, but it's a little trickier when you're given SSA. So we will talk about this next video. And that's it for this video. Like always, if you have any questions, comments, videos you want to see, or anything else you want to say, feel free to drop a comment down below. And other than that, I will see you next time.